But first, here's a quick word from the creator of TypeScript and technical fellow at Microsoft, Anders Heilsberg. Hi, I'm Anders Heilsberg, Microsoft technical fellow and TypeScript architect. I'm really excited to see that Gatsby is now fully supporting TypeScript. And as we look forward to TypeScript's 10-year anniversary later this year, we're humbled and thankful for the tremendous adoption that TypeScript has seen. It's what keeps us doing what we're doing. And by the way, more fans of Gatsby. We even use it in our website. Now on with GatsbyConf 2022. Hi everyone, and welcome to GatsbyConf 2022. I'm Patrick, and I'm the product lead for the Gatsby Open Source Framework. I'm here today to talk to you about where the framework's been, where it is today, and where we're heading this year. So to get started, I'd like to ask you a question. In your own words, what is Gatsby? Some of you are new to Gatsby. Some of you have used Gatsby for a long time. Regardless of your experience level, in a sentence, what is Gatsby to you? Go ahead and put your answer in the chat. In a single statement to us, Gatsby is the front end for creating highly performant content rich websites. It's a React based open source framework designed for the professional developer who wants to efficiently produce these kinds of websites. It's also a great tool for learning React and GraphQL. So if you're new to web development, Gatsby's a great place to get started. Gatsby incorporates a few components and some of them are unique to Gatsby. First of all, Gatsby is based on React, the most popular front-end library for building for the web. Our data layer ensures a consistent strategy for bringing your content into your site and to your audience, regardless which or how many data sources are involved. Lastly, Gatsby optimizes the resulting static assets via Webpack for performance and to make sure your site works across the various popular browsers. To allow developers to efficiently extend the base behavior of Gatsby, we also offer an extensive ecosystem of plugins that we and our community members curate. We're proud to be the framework of choice for these and other great brands. Gatsby is the framework chosen and trusted by companies across a variety of industries for speed, security, resilience, as well as the joy it brings developers through its fantastic developer experience. So who is Gatsby? It's very likely that Gatsby includes you. Gatsby is an open source project, which means its maintainers and contributors all have a hand in making Gatsby what it is today. If you're interested in contributing to Gatsby, be sure to watch the talks by Leonard Jorgens and Alex Moon. They'll help you find your way. So it's amazing how fast a year passes, and we've made some real moves together in the past year. In 2021, we started the year with Gatsby 3, which made it easier to create high performance images and sped up builds wherever you run them by open sourcing our incremental builds feature. Lastly, we made many ecosystem updates to Gatsby itself, making sure dependencies were current and that you were running on the latest supported version of Node. We then brought you Gatsby 4, which offered even faster builds through parallel query running and offered new rendering modes for building your Gatsby sites, specifically deferred static generation and server-side rendering. On the way to Gatsby 4, we worked with a select group of community members to iron out the details of the APIs and the use cases. This resulted in an incredibly simple API design for DSG and SSR. You'll see a continued and expanded emphasis on community collaboration throughout talks in this conference, as well as throughout the rest of 2022. Gatsby is known for being blazing fast for the end user, and this is due to Gatsby's opinionated stance that static is best. By default, all of your content is pre-generated to ensure maximum performance and reliability. Gatsby automatically implements some key performance enhancements for you, such as lazy loading and prefetching, so that you can feel like a performance expert without having deep performance expertise. To provide more control over where and when page building occurs, we introduced deferred static generation in Gatsby 4. This is useful in scenarios where your sites have long tail content such as blogs, documentation, real estate, news, and so on. 
Deferred pages are not built until the first user requests them. After that, those pages are now the same as any pre-generated page you'd find in classic static site generators. This is why we called it deferred static generation. It's exactly what's happening. Consider the use case of a blog with years worth of posts. By default, and as indicated on the left, all of the pages are generated at build time by default. This is what gets you that static site generator speed. On the right, however, you can see the older or lower priority content can be marked as deferred so that you don't spend build time generating these pages. They'll be generated and become static pages upon first user request. And we've seen hundreds of sites leverage DSG to accelerate the publishing of priority content, some of whom you'll hear from today. Lastly, we introduced proper server-side rendering into Gatsby 4. This was the most requested addition to Gatsby, according to a survey I shared with you all at last year's Gatsby Conf. We heard you and we delivered. Since October, when we launched Gatsby 4, over 1,000 sites have used SSR to incorporate external data to produce richer, more immersive experiences for their visitors. As an example, and you'll hear this in Ash's talk, Ash incorporated DSG and SSR from Gatsby 4 to more easily deliver a client project. Make sure you watch his talk. Over the course of last year, our goal was to reduce build times for people building Gatsby sites. Let's take a look at the experience across sites that have been using Gatsby and Gatsby Cloud the longest and have kept current with the latest version of Gatsby all along the way. The data you're about to see is from sites that are currently on Gatsby 4. So did we get faster over the past year? You bet, 17% faster overall. Now this chart not only shows a reduction in time it takes to ship your latest changes to production, but you can see that this is with even more builds over time. So even with higher volume of builds within Gatsby Cloud, it's 17% faster than it was a year ago when you build sites with Gatsby. So you have to ask, where are we heading? Well, the next chapter of Gatsby includes a thoughtful balance of developer experience, build performance, and front-end performance. We also made search engine optimization even easier by providing a framework level feature for ensuring all content in your site conforms to using either trailing or non-trailing slashes in the URL paths. This includes automatic 301 redirects if you use this feature in Gatsby Cloud. We've also expanded our TypeScript support within Gatsby. Now you can start your projects with TypeScript right away and we'll set everything up for you. We also have ES module support coming soon within Gatsby. Lastly, we want to make sure that local development is more consistent with production behavior so that you know if it worked on your machine, it'll work for your visitors. As I mentioned earlier, in 2021, we really focused on build performance, speed, and scale within Gatsby. The job's never really done there. So we've already improved parallel query running pretty substantially this year by yielding a 67% improvement in memory utilization and parallel query running. And we're incorporating unique ways to reduce time required to process images for your site, which you hear more about in Dustin Shaw and Joel Smith's talks. When it comes to build performance, we are also reevaluating what our build tool stack really needs to be to provide our users with the very best experience. You'll hear more about that as we move through 2022. On the previous slide, I mentioned improvements to parallel query running. Here you can see the latest improvements, which yielded a 67% reduction in memory for each worker during query running. So if you're on a multi-core machine, each CPU will perform much more efficiently. Now to get these benefits, make sure you are on the latest version of Gatsby. You'll hear us say that quite a bit. When it comes to front-end performance, we're focused on three main pain points for our users. The first is optimizing for third-party scripts. And we know that third-party scripts are a, one of the biggest offenders uh, to site performance for your visitors because they often introduce blocking time. Secondly, let's find a way to simplify metadata management. And thirdly, 
let's make it easier for our developers that are building Gatsby sites to ship less JavaScript to the browser. Maybe you want to participate in an open source project. Maybe you're looking to contribute. Maybe that project is Gatsby. If you'd like to get started, here are three things you can do. First, you could attend Leonard's talk about becoming an open source champion. Secondly, join our Discord server. And third, install the at next version of Gatsby. By doing this, you'll have access to experimental features and be able to give early feedback and participate in the issues and pull requests. And that's a great way to get involved in the project. So for the very best experience using Gatsby, if you're getting started and you're brand new, check out the tutorial. It's a great way of going from zero to published blog with Gatsby. And it highlights the main features of building sites with Gatsby. Second, make sure you're on the latest version of Gatsby. And thirdly, build and host on Gatsby Cloud. We work very closely with the cloud team to make sure Gatsby sites build and deploy as reliably and quickly as possible. If you'd like some more information about the difference of running Gatsby sites on Gatsby Cloud, here's a great article for you to review. So you may be asking, I wonder when the next major version of Gatsby is coming. It's not coming today. Last year was a pretty rapid set of consecutive major versions. So Gatsby, the next major version of Gatsby is coming this year. On the path to Gatsby 5, we are approaching the needs you saw listed in the previous slides. Developer experience, build performance, and front-end performance. So advances in these areas will all culminate in the next major version of Gatsby. So consider all that we talked about and delivered in 2021 via Gatsby 3 and Gatsby 4. We've done the same. We've been thinking back about everything that has happened and what we've heard from our users. These are the most urgent opportunities that we've heard from you to help you be a Gatsby developer that is happily creating content-rich websites and applications with Gatsby in 2022 and beyond. We might be missing something. This is where you come in. In 2021 at GatsbyConf, you said, we need an answer for dynamic sites. We need the ability to, um, at runtime, generate these pages instead of building all of these pages up front. You asked for SSR. And well, folks, it happened. And with that, I urge you to help define the next iteration of Gatsby by sharing your needs with us. Follow this URL, which we're also sharing in the chat below, to fill out this year's survey. It's a short survey, but the value of your voice is immeasurable to us. We're really eager to hear what you think of our focus in 2022, and even more eager to hear what we may be missing. And with that, I'll say thank you for joining me, and I hope you enjoy the rest of Gatsby. Stay tuned for the live Q&A. All right. Patrick, that was uh, amazing. Uh, great stuff as always. Uh, and can't wait to hear your voice live here on the, on your wonderful mic. I always love hearing your voice come across. It's going to be awesome. But we It's uh, just for you, JD. Hey, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, dude, it's like radio friendly. It's great. Um, I want to go right to a question we got from Daniela in our audience, which is, does DSG, this great feature you've been talking about and we love that was part of Gatsby 4, does it require Gatsby Cloud or could I use it on, say, GitHub pages? So right now we're really focused on ensuring that it works best in Gatsby Cloud. That said, there are other kind of third-party plugins that are being explored to uh, allow for DSG to be used on other hosting providers. And um, it is pretty straight. Uh, we do have you know, some reference examples out there of, of how to accomplish DSG with other providers. Love that, love that. One other one we got from the crowd from Anthony is just, are there any plans for URL normalization? Uh, so yeah, if somebody mistyped, you know, they had a capitalized raffle instead of a lowercase raffle in his example, 
would you, you know, a way to avoid a 404 there and, and have some URL normalization? That's really interesting. So um, we haven't we haven't talked about that specifically. What we have been focused on right now is uh, URL normalization by way of ensuring standard trailing or non-trailing slash behavior in URLs. We found that to be kind of a, a higher priority need, certainly in the content editors and marketing folks. Yeah, absolutely. One last to me, and then I know Lacey's got some, if people want to get involved with Gatsby projects, especially things like, I don't know, maybe working towards Gatsby 5, what's the best way for people to get involved with helping out with the framework? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, there are two talks that are coming later today that I really think you should attend if you are interested in that. Um, Leonard Jorgens and Alex Moon are both giving talks about community and getting involved there. Um, I would also suggest joining our Discord server. I think Leonard dropped a link to our Discord invite in the chat. So go out there, join up. We just did some um, pretty solid updates to the onboarding for folks coming to Discord, as well as cleaned up the channels so that it's really easy to find, you know, things that people are building with Gatsby to get inspiration and so on. Love that. Nice. Yeah. A little Gatsby house cleaning, if you will. Um, <laughs> yeah. I do have one question. Patrick, I want to go back to that slide uh, about the 17% speed up slide that you um, showed. It has far fewer builds in Q2 than Q1 is what we saw. That yeah. seems like a pretty sharp drop. So <laughs> yeah, tell so me that, more. That's, that's the joy of pre-recording things, right? So that, um, that was taken in uh, the beginning of February. And I just looked at that before our, before the talk today and, and where we are right now in March, we're in, in, uh, in March, we're uh, uh, fourteen percent higher than we were in, in the previous in the previous segment. So, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely much higher build counts than you see in those slides, and the activity continues to grow there. Nice. All right. Cool. That that explains it. So, thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. You got it. And and in general, Patrick, thank you for sharing all this. Uh, you're going to be obviously around Gatsby Conf, right? People can yeah chat with yeah, you and. Yeah, Go for ahead. sure. And actually, um, in Hubelo, I don't know if you have noticed this, but there is a way to set meetings with folks, other attendees. And I've, I've reached out to a couple of folks. So feel free to reach out to me and set a meeting with me if you're if you're interested in chatting. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to connect with anybody out there. Awesome. And also, you dropped a poll, right? I did. It's linked in or here. A survey, There's sorry. A, yeah, a survey. A survey is linked in here. And Leonard, thank you for dropping the, the I think you just dropped the Discord invite link again. Um, in the chat. So go in there and click in, join us um, as we're continuing to move the web forward at Gatsby. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Patrick. You got Appreciate it. Thanks everyone. Yeah, for Patrick. Nice work. Bye. All right. Bye now. Yeah. All right. Uh, that was great. And we have more greatness coming up. Uh, two talks coming up at 1220 Pacific. Um, so that is uh, like seven ish minutes from now. Uh, Patrick just mentioned becoming an open source champion with Gatsby, and that is going to be with Gatsby senior software engineer, Leonard Jorgens. And then we also have at the exact same time, building a modern front end with a legacy back end. And that's going to be with uh, attached digital co-founders, Tom Hughes and John Thornton. I just mentioned them because they built one of the, actually, I think they built two of the sites from the last raffle batch we just did. So Prolific uh, agency. Check out both. <laughs> What's that? A prolific agency for sure. Prolific, yes. Uh, like many of the Gatsby agencies, prolific. So um, join us in one of those talks. Again, I know that that's really hard to choose between the two. Um, so if you don't get to go to one, you can watch it shortly after Gatsby Comp is over. So we will see you at those talks in about five or six minutes. Yep, and don't forget to visit those sponsors. Uh, they help us pull off an event like this and bring all this to you. And they're active in this in the sponsor lounges, so go definitely check them out. Uh, and as Patrick mentioned, uh, definitely join us on our in Discord as well. It's Discord, a great yeah. place to keep the conversations going after uh, the event today. So definitely head on over there, and uh, we'll see you there too. But it's Leonard, and it's Attached Digital coming up next. We'll see you in a couple minutes. Bye. See you, everyone.